Pulse, I understand that your brain's getting a little bit rattled because this is twice in a row that we've seen Tom Kench, a champion that I would never expect, have expected to be the one and only in the 1v1s. But twice in a row, he's been victorious. Yeah, I'm not sure how I feel about that. Uh, I think we, we just honestly need to see less ADCs. Yeah, that's, that's what I definitely want to see. true. But we are up to round three. Zanzarar, CS Jungler, is going to be coming out for Team Fire as Elwind is going to take to the stage for the Turkish lineup and Team Ice. And we saw Elwind actually wasn't all that confident as far as that 1v1 potential when we saw that uh, feature earlier on. So we'll see whether he can pull it all together now after his team is already up two games. If there was a pressure off scenario, it is now, Pulse. I mean, he doesn't need to be nervous. Stay calm and just play Tom Kent <laughs> as his team has demonstrated to him. It's just a free win, apparently. Uh, yeah. Zanzara, like, sending out your jungler now at this point is just like, well, that's, if I lose this one, I'm, I'm the person no one really has any faith in. <laughs> then we've just kind of yeah. lost the best of five. Uh, lot to live up to. We haven't even seen Kira yet. I would have busted out the big guns and said, screw it. We're going to at least get one win on the board. Well, this is right. And I mean, if Kira's going to be playing so far down the lineup, they may just flat out lose before he even gets a chance to carry them. Of course, if anyone remembers from 2015, Kira was the champion of the 1v1s. This guy knows exactly what's up. Yeah, he was my boy. I was yeah. repping him all the way through IWCI, all the way through All Stars before he got bopped by Froggen. But until that point, he was doing incredibly well and just understood the game. So this doesn't work like a dungeon atlas. You don't put your raid <laughs> boss at the end. You want your raid boss at the front. Yeah, exactly right. Because you can beat the dungeon by only doing the first three levels. You just exactly. leave the butcher down there. Like, who even cares? Like, you can want all the fresh meat that you want, but I'm back up in town just reaping the rewards of my easy win. So we are in a champion select, though. Caitlyn, Nasus, and Tom Kench going to be banned what away by Zanzara. Makes a lot of sense. It as uh, Rengar and Graves are going to take the bench on the side of Elwin. We'll see what he decides to take away last, and then what we're going to see from the Turkish lineup as round two of their picks of choice. Because it seems like together they have a tier list of 1v1 champions. That's actually what I wanted to talk about, because the interesting th uh, thing here, Atlas, is we don't really have much of a meta. It's not like, X is open, so I'm going to pick it 100%. Lucian's yeah. open, okay, bam, going to go for that Lucian. It's what cheese has our team prepared to <laughs> toss at the opponent? Let's see if it works. That has left Kennen open, as uh, we were talking on the analyst desk yesterday, yep. that Kennen should be a pretty strong pick if Pampion's off the table. But Pampion is open, which was actually strong yesterday. So we'll see. Um, like, Quinn is always good, and that's going to be locked in as well. So this is actually more, quote-unquote, like 1v1 meta and more yeah. what we were expecting to see. That's exactly right. No end, of course, being the top laner here. This guy has a lot of experience on the cannon, so it makes a lot of sense. I mean, it has been a 1v1 top pick of old. We saw him all throughout RWCA 2015, and now Elwin going to pick it up one more time. But Quinn is a champion that has always had a bit of a reputation for being good in those 1v1s. I mean, she has crazy 1v1 potential. She is a lane bully. She's the quintessential oh, yeah. lane bully in that 1v1. I see what you did there. In the mid lane and the top lane. Thank you very much, Atlas. I always You're appreciate welcome. when someone appreciates my uh, terrible jokes. But uh, in this 1v1, slightly less in the Quinn's favor. Uh, Kenan will be able to trade back. Has slightly less range, to keep in mind. And his AD numbers have been hit in terms of the base yeah. stats over and over and over again. So in pure auto attacks trade, she'll win out, especially with the Harrier and the blinds on top of that. But Kenan, if he gets the Harassian and Quinn isn't like controlling the lane, that could be a potential window for him. And also at the level six. Yeah, and Quinn as well doesn't necessarily have the range to outrange the Maelstrom if he is just going to go straight in at level six as well. So we'll see whether Elwind is going to be able to utilize that, just get the auto attacks down. The stuns are going to be coming in left, right, and center. Cannon, that's what he's known for. We'll see whether he can do it. However, on the other side, Quinn, I mean, level two, you get Vault, you get Blinding Assault, and you can just probably kill someone anyway. Yeah, I mean, uh, you take a look at Quinn and her spikes are at level one, level two, level three, level four, level five, and <laughs> level six. So, Cannon in a bit of a rough spot. Uh, <laughs> He, assume, he want to, uh, he'll want to maximize his W damage, uh, so he may even go for that first. Actually, he might go for the, the Q first for the range harass, and then max out the W. Um, in the 1v1 trades, he can just go all in with the E. Um, there are some strategies where you'll max out the E as well second, but I'm not sure if he really wants the resistances or will be enough really to save him in the 1v1, whereas the damage from Electrical Surge will be way more. Yeah, definitely true. As right now, they're just eyeing each other off. Arcticops Cannon, one of my personal favorites, but I don't know why you wouldn't be a doctor. MD Cannon. Yeah, MD Cannon is the best, because trust me, I'm a doctor, you know? You can lead them into a false sense of security. And uh, bam, here's the scalpel. Yeah, exactly right. Well, laning phase is going to start. Zanzara 
Just clearing out the waves, not worrying about hitting the Kenny too much. Zoin's going to miss one of the CS. Sands are doing much better this time. Actually misses two of them, unfortunately. Yeah, by virtue of being Quinn, uh, it forces <laughs> Elwyn back. Like, Elwyn can't approach the minion wave because if he gets into an auto attack, uh, auto attack trade at this stage in the game, he just loses. He went for the Q level one because he just wants to farm and knew this fact. Oh, misses the blinding assault. This is exactly what we were talking about. Once he hits that level two, especially if he hits it before Elwyn, things get dangerous. He looks for the punish. Uh, Elwyn is just going to punch him in return as Zanzara tries to approach. Uh, that's the only really window that he can go for, or he can go for some, like, crazy... Um, Qs that go around the minions, but this is disastrous right now. He's missing all of the minions under the tower. This is uh, about as bad as it could have gone, but there were two missed minions from Zanzara, so it's not the end of the world right now. Well, it certainly isn't. And of course, the pressure is on the jungler to try and farm this one out. Doesn't have a lot of experience last hitting creeps, because of course, the jungle minions don't have any things bashing on them. It's much easier that way. Zelwyn's just guarding his health relic. Doesn't want to use it just yet for the lack of efficiency. Oh, good stun from Elwind as he goes back, wins the trade. That's nice. It's very hard for him to make that happen because uh, typically Quinn will just be able to hit you with the Q, but I think he was either down or just about to come up there as Zandra used it on the minion wave. So it's kind of like a Blitzcrank hook. Like you don't want to just shoot it out because as soon as it's down, then it opens up a window for your opponent to go in. Uh, likewise, when Elwind throws out a Shuriken uh, and gets a mark of the storm, then he can go in as well because landing two more marks considerably easier uh, as he can just charge at the Quinn. And now that's happened two or three times and it's given Elwin control of the lane. Yeah, the other thing we have to look at is the fact that, of course, Kennen's an energy champion. Zanzara on the Quinn is a mana champion, so we'll have to watch out for that mana bar. Elwin certainly doesn't, so all of those spells can just be spammed by the Kenny. Quinn has to be a little bit more careful. However, not anymore. We'll have that full blue bar. He goes back, grabs himself an extra Doran's Blade and those boots as well. I'm looking to hopefully pick up some of these minions under the turret. Uh, additionally, uh, Kennen is very punishing if you force your opponent back because he can just uh, sweep through the minion wave with his uh, W and E combo, completely clear it out, and then Zandra is going to miss maybe two or three CS there. Um, later into the game, it becomes even worse as he insta-clears it. He can't do that while his opponent's in lane necessarily, uh, unless he has a massive, a massive advantage because your opponent will just hit you in the face a bunch, and yeah. then you'll, uh, you'll get chunked. But right there, he was able to shove it in and use Lightning Rush to get back to lane. Yeah, he's going to do so. Falling behind 8 CS, though, on the side of Elwind. Zandra misses that one, but has otherwise been very, very good with this farming. Elwind once again back in the position of guarding this health relic, trying to find his window. Is it going to be level 6? Is that what Elwind's looking for? Wants to get that slicing Maelstrom. Of course, Zandra will have the Sky Strike, I guess, after he comes down off Valor. But otherwise, it's not exactly a huge level for Quinn. Um, you can move into the bush because there are no wards in this game mode, then you can head into the bush and then try and get like a surprise strike. It's not like an all-in trade, but it's just something else you can add to your combo. Kennen finds it kind of hard to interrupt it out of the ultimate. He has to land the shuriken, if nothing else. Um, if he lands an auto attack, she's already on top of you, so it's pretty hard for him to deal with that. Uh, but as soon as he hits level 6, as you rightly said in champion select, Kennen's going to murder you. Because yeah. this is like, oh, what's your offensive spell? You dash further into my maelstrom. <laughs> Fantastic. So exactly. Elwin's uh, in pretty good shape. And of course, if that uh, vault does come out, then uh, what do you do? You just throw out your Q. Easy peasy. Skill shot, not even necessarily a skill shot at that stage. Yeah, uh, I, I feel like the end may have come for Zanzara already, just because he's not being particularly aggressive. He's not looking for a lot of auto attack trades. That's what he should have been doing earlier into the game, but we're now five minutes kind of too late. Uh, he was able to get the push in the last wave, so Elwin had to go for that health relic to just burn it, but um, right now, unless he gets some serious damage in, Elwin's in a position where he can all in. He's got the level six. Yeah, and he's going to get hit by the edge of that blinding assault, but not too much of a good stun comes out from Elwin, but not going for the all-in just yet. Oh my goodness, the face check as Elwin throws down the ultimate, but can't close the gap. Oh. It's a disaster, and that is a huge cooldown now that Elwin will have to wait before going for any other kind of all-in. Okay, that went as well as it could have done for Zanzara. Um, Elwin got the perfect combo one. He put Zandra in the easiest of kill ranges. He just needed another trade. He could have chased him down. Could have popped the ultimate. That's a kill. But now Elwin walks back in again. That's ludicrous amounts of damage. Remember, Elwin doesn't have the defensive summoner spell. Zandra is the one with the barrier, so isn't as worried as this cannon. Who's now forced back 11 CS behind once this last one falls. And another minion wave for Zandra to eat up and throw into the turret of the cannon. 
Yeah. But to finish that point off, uh, Xandra played that pretty perfectly. He stayed just on the outside ring of where the Maelstrom was, so he's not going to be able to get in range again. He knew he'd already burned all of Kennen's spells, so he wasn't able to Lightning Rush in. Um, and then he could just stay on the edge and continue to harass. He's got the farm advantage, he can play the slow now. The yep. only downfall uh, is that Elwyn did manage to keep the exhaust and ignite. So if he does get in range for the exhaust, he can use that as a uh, soft gap close to allow himself to get on top of the Quinn for the ultimate. But Xandra also kept his barrier, so there's a lot of trade-offs to how the next couple minutes can go, but Xandra has an into this game now. Very interesting that he goes for this uh, Spectre's Cow pickup as well. Zanzara just looking to play out the long game. Not too worried. Just says, well, I'm ahead in farm. Head in farm by quite a way. That's like a more than a full minion wave. This blinding Assault comes in one more time. Draws back some distance. Nicely done as the auto trades are winning out here for the Quinn, but good stun once again for the follow-up from Elwyn. We'll go and get himself a little bit more healthy. Health packs for everyone. He's going to once again go back. The optimal trade here for Elwyn is uh, not to get hit, hit in the face by a bird, but instead to get all three marks of the Storm down, just like that. Yeah. Uh, if he can lead with Q and then follow up with an auto attack and a W, perfect, just backs away. Uh, if he gets into an extended trade, I'm talking about three, four seconds, Quinn starts to come out on top. Elwyn does have that slicing Maelstrom back off cooldown once again, so that all-in opportunity is there. And this clock is most certainly ticking for the cannon. Scary, scary time. Zanzaro just using that mana bar to clear out as many minions as he can. He knows that the pressure is on to last hit them all very, very effectively if he wants to win this. Because slowly but surely, Elwind is coming out the better as time goes on. But still, 11. It's not. That gap isn't closing very fast, False. It is not, but that was a dirty Q coming out from Elwind, and that may allow him to get in here. It's been a couple minutes, so his ultimate is, of course, up. Had he landed one more for the stun, that probably would have spelt the end there for Zanzara. That was a fantastic vault as well, just to make sure that that Slice of Astrum was once again not in range. Wants to be able to see exactly what's going on. Good Ignite comes in as Elwin there. He's going to close the gap now. No opportunity. Good exhaust. Very, very late. No, Elwin oh. doesn't get the last auto and cancels the final one, being very scared of that turret. A big smile on Zanzara's face there. He knew he should not have been alive to see another day. But Elwin botches it just at the very end. It was not quite enough. Needed to be a little further forward so he could have just landed the final auto attack. But he gets away with it. Oh, oh. there it is. <laughs> that is what Tilt that is made of, ladies and gentlemen. Exactly right. Okay. Zanzara doesn't do so well clearing out that particular minion wave as the cannon's going to make his way back to lane as well. Bit of attack speed, bit of damage. Just start filling out that variety bucket after the Seeker's Arm Guard has been picked up, which should stack up before the game's over, <laughs> which is good. You would have to hope. Um, but the important thing here is Elwyn has maybe one more opportunity before minions take over the game or his tower dies. Uh, Zandra hasn't got that much damage on tower. It's probably going to come down to a minion game. Uh, but Elwyn, his all-in is now on his next ultimate. If he doesn't win with that, basically over, because Xandra will just chunk him down. Sky Strike will be able to uh, just get efficient trades against the cannon if he abuses the brush. And he has that one Ooh, shot. Good dodge of the Blinding Assault. And med Pack going to come up once again. Elwind does have the inside track if he wants to get to it first, and Lightning Rush will allow him to get there, so steals it away. And now one minion is the difference as this wave crashes to the turret. Make that two. Make it three. That's four. He's farming very, very well. Misses the last one, but that's only four minions. This is very, very close. As far as all the 1v1s that we've had, like, this is probably one of the closest thus far. Zanzaro is really trying to hold on to this series for Team Ice. I think regardless of how this 1v1 goes, Zandra has garnered the respect of his team and pretty much everyone watching, because no one was expecting this from a jungler, not, e not even his own team. Yeah. So he has done real well against a top laner. His micro skill is fantastic. He actually wins out on that last trade as well, as Elwin's looking to try and get his way in. Slicing Maelstrom is there, the vault's down, but look at all this damage. The minion's doing work as well, but there it is. No barrier available. Oh, Whoa. misses the cube, but gets the last auto, and Elwin secures the victory for Turkey. Three to nothing in the first three games. Dominance is asserted. That is the face of happiness, but frustration for Elwind as multiple all-ins went awry for him. Zandra holds